the most craziest thing mankind came up with is to pay for your water. Yes. One of the most craziest things to come up with. Water is an essential life requirement. Mm -hmm. To pay for it is a ludicrous proposition. Huh? Secondly, paying for your food. How crazy is that? We all need food, while, particularly while we have emotional injuries. We definitely all need food to survive. So, so how crazy is it that we've created an inst institutions and a whole system, a whole economic system where we have to pay for it? All of us need shelter. Every single person. So why are we having to pay for it? There's enough resources on this planet to create shelter for every individual. Uh, we shouldn't need to have pay for it. Now, I can understand having to pay for a piece of art, perhaps, or an aeroplane, or something that's out of the ordinary <laughs> in terms of because it uses more resources. But to actually pay for things that are essential for our very life makes no logical or loving sense whatsoever. And this is what we need to do. We need to start confronting these particular things. So the way we do that is we, if we personally start doing that, we'll confront all the emotions inside of us that cause us to not want to do that. All the unloving behaviour that we have will all be triggered and released very rapidly. But what I find is the majority of people do not embrace that. And while you don't embrace it, you live in the fear of it. While you live in the fear of it, you can only construct what you've already constructed. So in other words, you can only go and get a job that you get paid for. I would, I would much rather see all of you here being exactly the work you love, every single day you love it, and you do it for free, and on top of that, you're all well off because everybody appreciates the thing you do, and so they, they, they demonstrate the appreciation to you. But it's going to need your trust of that. Like So, so at the beginning, I'm going... Hmm. I'm having to say I'm Jesus and everybody's going to think I'm a nut. <laughs> I have to do everything that in my life for free because that's what it feels like I have to do. And everybody's not only going to think I'm a nut now, but I'm going to be a very poor nut and not, <laughs> <laughs> and not survive very long either probably. Right? And then on top of that, I'm going to have to give away everything I've got for free and then in the end I won't have anything myself. Right? These are all emotions I had to work my way through. And I go, yeah, the likelihood of this being very successful is very low. Right? That was my opinion. At the beginning of eight years ago, that was my opinion. And, and I went, okay, but it still has to be done. Right? Even though I was afraid that that would be the outcome, it still had to be done. And somebody had to do it. Right? Somebody had to lead this process of this change. Once I started embracing that myself, I found out many things about my fear. One of the things I found was that many of the things I was afraid of never happened. Isn't that interesting? Have you found that in your life, that many of the things you're afraid of? How many, how many of you have been afraid of dying horribly in a car accident? How many of you? Well, obviously, you're still here, <laughs> yeah. so it hasn't <laughs> happened. <laughs> How many of you, when you get in an aeroplane, are afraid of it crashing? Yeah? You're still here, so it hasn't happened. Can you see, like, the majority of us fear things that ha don't actually happen. Right? And, and the reality is the majority of our fears, and I think some people have done some studies, that something like 95% of what you're afraid of never happens your entire life. And the other 5% of things that happen seem to be quite liberating once they've <laughs> happened. <laughs> or they've already and happened it, in the past yeah. year once before and you survived it, yeah. <laughs> which is interesting too. Yeah. So, so what we'd like to do is, uh, for the, and end off today with this, we'd like to encourage you to truly embrace your fears rather than still live in your addictions. Focus on feeling your way through your addiction so that you can find your fears and get rid of these fears out of your life, out of your soul. Get rid of them out of your soul. They will automatically disappear from your life then, right? Get, get rid of them out from inside of you by feeling them. 
don't worry about what other people think about you. But if you do worry, feel that too. And feel it until it's gone. So that in the end, every, all of these fear-based emotions will be gone. The grief, which is, remember the grief is the healing emotion. So the grief will naturally come up after that. You'll progress very rapidly once this grief starts flowing in you. And, and every single one of you have the capacity of growing rapidly as a result of just feeling through your fear and into your grief. But while you remain in heavy addiction, one of our microphones is obviously running out of battery. While you're afraid of uh, and living in addiction, you have no way of confronting your fear. If you have no way of confronting your fear, then of course you're never going to get to your grief. If you never get to your grief, you're never going to become at one with God. you never be completely happy in your entire life. There's a high likelihood you'll never be happy in your relationships. There's a high likelihood that you'll never be happy for a long time, even after you die in the spirit world, unless you do this. Remember those ladies that we talked to last night? They, that lady, um, what was her, her name, Tiffany? She had been there in the spirit world, in this state of fear, for a, an additional 60 years mm. of her life. So she'd lived a life on earth, right? And what's the average lifespan on earth? Usually it's 80 nowadays, 70 or 80 years at least. And then on top of that, she lived another 60 years thinking that she could control her fears, that she didn't have to feel them. And in a state of stagnation where she's not enjoying her life, she, there's no man, no man with her in her life. Right? Her soulmates are male. She's no man in her life. Uh, she hasn't attracted that even in the spirit world. So, so unless we address these particular emotions, we're just going to be consigned to the same kind of life, but just in a different location. So it's far better if we can address them right now. Don't satisfy yourself to live in your addictions. Because in the end, you're, you're, by doing that, by making that choice, you're actually choosing a stagnant life. And, and a stagnant life is never going to be a happy one in the long run. And it's a life that's not controlled by your soul. It's a life that's controlled by denial of your soul. And so it feels, so in contrast to actually living in your soul, it feels so bland, really. Mm. It just You're just controlled by addiction, that's all. And not by your desire or the personality that God gave you. And it's not until you sort of engage the process of confronting your addictions that you even realise how much... It, it, it's suppressed a lot of your desires and other emotions, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Mm. And, and personality and the real, yeah, the yeah. real self, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we'd like to encourage yeah. you to do today. It's totally worth it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it today, guys. So we'll, we'll see you, uh, I think. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>